impromptu theme music go. All right, here's the basic uh, interface of Node-RED. I have, I basically, I've set up a dev environment, a brand new install of Node-RED. I've also got a brand new install of Home Assistant with nothing in it yet. And nothing in it yet, but it, uh, here, um, except for I did add an MQTT server. Uh, and we'll get to that. So basically, this is your interface. Um, you've got uh, you've got all your nodes here in this in this side palette that can scroll up and down, and you can drag them out, drop them on, delete them, and uh, this is your your grid area. This this grid is where you actually develop the flows. And then you do have separate tabs. Um, you can add tabs pretty easily. Uh, just by clicking the, and you can give it a name. Uh, and then we can, um, you know, you can drag your in next flow out and get busy doing that. Uh, you've also got, you can go to the list up here and, and jump between them. Um, if you have a lot of tabs and you want to jump to the one specific one later. I know I have a lot of tabs. I have probably have 20 or 30 tabs. Uh, then you've got your uh, zoom in here. I'll put you back on this one. You've got your zoom. You can, Down here you can zoom in. Um, on these guys. And then you got your center button which kind of centers it in the middle and resizes it. Um, this map thing I've never... Navigator, it, it basically shows you the whole tab, and you can jump down to this little spot of it, but I, I never really use that. Uh, it's always kind of felt it kind of useless. Now you can drag, you can select nodes and move them around, or select only two nodes, move those around, but the line stay. Select that node, move it around. Um, then over on this side, you've got your deploy button. Now, normally, I keep that one set to modified flows. Although full just releases everything again and reloads everything, and there's no need to do that every time. You really should just only put it on modified flows. Uh, and then you've got your your uh, your in, your uh, tabs over here, uh, info, which is not really that helpful. It just shows the other tabs and what what nodes are on what tabs it's not that useful um the uh the docs are really good too because you can select a like an mqt mqtt and then you can um read how it works and what you can pass to it to make it do what you want uh really good to docs you can do that with a switch you know and then you get the how to how a switch works uh, the other thing is the debug. Now, debugs are really important um, for the, the screen tab here. Anything that's in here, as long as it's turned on, and then it'll show up here when you run the flow. Um, this is the configuration nodes. Like I said, the only thing I've set up is MQTT. Uh, don't really use context that much. I guess that's it. And then up here at the top, you've got... Um, You've got your uh, import and export for bringing in other people's uh, uh, flows. It all comes in JSON string. So if I were to export this flow, it would look like this JSON string um, that I would have to send. You could then send it to someone else. Oops. And then um, uh, and then you've got the palette, manage palette. Now this is where you can uh, go and uh, get, say you wanted the home assistant plug in, uh, you would get this one here, WebSocket, Home Assistant WebSocket. Um, this is how you would find it, but just by searching. Um, there's all kinds of uh, palettes you can add. Um, yeah, I guess there's not one for the bot. Um, and this is how you would add them. So um, 
we'll get to that later. Uh, and then you've also got your settings. And one of the things I recommend you do um, first right off the bat is change your grid size to 25. Um, this allows you to have, see how this one's got uh, a status underneath? It lets them stack on top of each other and yet still have that status be readable. Otherwise, it's like right up against it and you can't, See, it'll snap to the grid there, but it snaps to 25. There's space under there to read the uh, those statuses when you see them. So I recommend that. Um, and then, so this is how, uh, that's pretty much the interface. Um, you're, you're opening a browser to, you know, your IP colon 1880, and this is the interface that loads, and then, you basically just go to town. All right, so let's start with a basic flow. Um, we're going to pull out an inject node. Um, an inject node will, uh, it's, um, it's a user input or it can be set up to be a timed input. So let's say you want to run uh, every two minutes, you would set that to two and change that to minutes, and then every two minutes it's going to inject. It's going to start the, that flow. Um, or you could do it uh, at a specific time or between times. Uh, it's, it's pretty powerful. So we're going to just do it on manual. Uh, and right now we're going it, to, it, you'll see it's injecting a timestamp. Uh, we're going to add a debug node. Uh, this will show you what is going on. And we're we'll, going to click on the debug tab. I like changing all nodes to current flow. Uh, I wish you could leave it on that as a default, but uh, Node Red won't let you do that. And then we're going to deploy. And so now and nothing happens until you hit deploy. You cannot, the flow is not active or running until de hit deploy. And like I said, I'd like to leave it on modified flows only. Uh, okay, now we're going to hit this button right here next to the timestamp. And you'll see it's that the payload, which if you hover over this, puts a, it puts a, a dotted dash line around the, the node that it came from to help you find it. Um, you'll see that the payload got uh, uh, timestamp got kicked out. It's a JavaScript timestamp so but you can click it and get the full uh, everything's in UTZ Zulu uh, but you can get that yourself it also will key off your local time here it looks like it's keying off my, uh, not keying off my local time but that one is all right so now we've got the timestamp let's change that to be a string and in here, you can change it from a timestamp to a, a Boolean, a number, a string, uh, a JSON, uh, a JSON uh, string, whatever. So I'm going to set it to be a string, and I'm going to say on. All right, now I'm going to do a switch. Now a switch is in like, uh, like an if-else kind of thing. Uh, we're going to drag a, a line over. So you're dragging from this guy over to that guy. And that's how they're connected. And it flows from left to right. And we're going to say, we're going to make the first one on, and then we're going to go down here to add a second one, and we're going to say off. And again, you can make these strings or numbers or whatever. Um, that is important later if you want this uh, switch to work that you are one capital capitals uh, caps matter so if you're doing if I'm sending a lowercase o n but this is expecting capital o n or capital then it's not going to see it it's not going to be true at that point so caps matter pay attention to those all right so now we've got a switch. Now I'll add another debug. So 
if I do a message on, it's going to go to this top node on. If I do an off, it's going to go to that bottom one. So I'm doing an on. I'm going to deploy that. You'll see that on went to both of them. So on went to the first one, and then it went to the second one. So now we're going to add a, another inject node, because you can have more than one. And we're going to change it to string. We're going to change that to off. We're going to attach that one. Add another debug. So now if I hit off, you'll see that off went to that that debug. Didn't go to this one because it's not connected to that first in instinct. So we'll go ahead and get rid of it. That first input. Now we get an off. Now we got an on. And they're going different paths. And that's the this is what makes no red pretty great is that now that I've switched and I'm on this path um, I'm on this path outside of it I can do I can branch here and go to multiple do multiple things at once so let's say we want to post an, an MQTT when um, when we press the on so we're gonna do that we're gonna set already set up my MQTT broker and so I'm just going to do a topic. Hello slash world. I always like to use QS2 and retrain true. Okay. So now when I press, uh, go ahead and clear out this, clear that with the trash can. Deploy. Now when I press on, it's going to say hello, and it's going to say connected. That means it posted to the MQTT. So, let's... so now let's pull up uh, MQTT Explorer. We can see that. So let me get there, add that. So we're going to pull this over. And then there you could see it. Hello world with an on. If I were to... Drag another one over here, so they're both going, the on and off are both going to the same place. Deploy that, do an off, you'll see that it goes to an off right there on the MQT Explorer. Now let's say we wanted them to go somewhere different. I could copy this guy and paste, drag a new line over, and we'll change it to Hello World 2. Deploy that. So now an on will go hello world on, but an off will go to a different topic altogether. There it is, hello world two off. And the great thing about that, there's no now you'll see that there's no uh, output on this on the on the end of this node. Like it, this is as far as that string can go. However, you can branch off here so you can just add another for the off for this off switch another off and we can go a whole nother direction and do something else this way that's the great thing about node red is that you can just infinitely branch and it helps to make really really complex and um, automations all right so there you go that's your first flow and that's how it works. Well, that's it for today's video. You know what to do. It's YouTube. Click the buttons.